delighted to say that unbeaten cruiserweight contender Richard Riekpour joins us now. Richard, there's a real sort of buzz going on behind us here because we have just launched. Uh, so that means finally you finally, can talk about finally, it. Finally, um, finally. It's about time. Yeah, I know yeah. you've been quizzed a lot. What's happening, yeah. what's happening, what's happening. You yeah, can talk about it now. <laughs> it's funny because everybody was asking me, what's going on? What deals have you been offered? Who are you going to go for? And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I can't really tell you anything right now because, you know, it's on the wraps. But, you know, just wait in anticipation. There's going to be a good announcement pretty soon and, and we're finally here. So it's good, excited now. Now I can release our pictures as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the footage, you know, of um, you know, behind the scenes, doing all the promo and stuff. Listen, it's fun. It's good, exciting times right now. Yeah, I've always wondered what it's like for a fighter like yourself. Um, it's a serious business, boxing, but yeah. it is exciting when... Um, you have a big announcement like this to make. And boxing is a funny sport that everybody knows everything. Yeah. So did anybody guess? Because um, a lot of people very close to us couldn't guess. They didn't know. We, yeah. you know the fact we managed to keep it so secretive was a big win for us. Yeah. Uh, did anybody guess that what you were doing? To be honest, a lot of people were wondering, like, what is going on? They didn't have a clue. And I was speaking to Johnny Nelson and Anna Woodhouse. And they said they found out yesterday. Yeah, they like didn't know. Yesterday, <laughs> yeah, late they were, night. They weren't very happy that I knew. <laughs> so they, were, they were fuming. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, what? Did you prep for everything just last night? They said, yeah, we had to. I was like, That's, that just shows you're a different class, honestly, because I would have been like, a bit nervous. Like, oh, I've got all this prepping to do. But yeah, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> It's really good. We're really excited to be working with you again. It's been a frustrating time. You've had an injury layoff as well. Um, so your announcement, you're back on the first boxer show at Wembley Arena. Yes, so on the Eubank undercard. And yeah, finally getting back, back in there, mixing it. And we want to dominate this division. You know, we've done a number on these cruiserweights in, in the UK. And now we want to push on and aim for that fringe world level and then get that world title. Simple and unify eventually. So when you sat down with Ben Shalom, did you yeah. say, look, I've beaten, and I'm not digging anyone out, but yeah. you will have sat back during this period and seen people that you've beaten push yeah. on. Yeah. Did you sit there and say, look, I don't, I don't want to go slow. Uh, I believe that I'm good enough to win world titles. Uh, how did the conversation go? What, what was your sort of roadmap when you sat down with him? Yeah, I, told, I told Ben I want to jump right in there, you know, and initially we came up with a deal, the contract, everything was done. And then we called Ben back and Ben could tell you this. I said, listen, I want to change the opponent. I want this opponent, which would have me ranked up in the, in the organisation straight away. So a better opponent. Yeah, yeah. And, and a, a solid somebody that's been around the block. And unfortunately, it was like everything was all done. So we just had to go on with, with this opponent. But it's, it's, all, it's all good. I don't have a problem with that. But we want to push straight away because right now I'm in a prime physically. And, you know, we, we've done a number on these guys, you know, and these guys are still not looking too great. And I just, I just have that confidence in me that I'll just destroy them, honestly. Itchy knuckles, I suppose, um, in, in, <laughs> in the gym. I didn't think I'd be sitting this close <laughs> to you, it me a bit nervous, but uh, obviously you've been in the gym behind closed doors. Yeah. The pandemic and the time off has been a curse because ring rust, what we've seen since people come back, it yeah. is a real killer. Yeah. But at the same time, it has given you a chance, presumably, to hone your craft with Angel Fernandez yeah. as well, who you seem to have a great bond with. Yeah. But we haven't had a chance for you to show that in the ring yet. Of course. So now it's the perfect, it's the perfect time. October the 2nd, everybody will be able to see that. And you have to bear in mind, when I came into the game, I was chucked right to the deep end. And I had to just, it's either I was sinking or swimming. And I had to find a way to learn on the job, which I like to say, we love that about you, though, yeah. because actually every single bill that came out was like, God, Richard's in a good fight here. Yeah. You know, he might not win that fight. That's a 50-50. Um, that's a little bit of a throwback attitude. Yeah. So from our point of view, I was speaking from a fan, I think that might be one of the reasons people warned to you, because it was like, why not? Yeah, of course, because you know, it's boring seeing somebody winning, that somebody that sh is supposed to win on paper, winning all the time. A beats you, B. Exactly. Week. We want to see adversity. We want to see how they overcome certain situations in the ring. And with me... We saw that from the, ver the very first match. And I was like, oh, Richard, he's lucky there. He got through, but we'll see how he does the next one. Next one come, I blew the guy out of the water. But what the, what is going on? This is crazy. This guy has that power to go all the way. Then come to the next fight, he beat this guy again. Everybody was losing their money betting against Reactor. <laughs> Everybody was you, losing their money. It's hilarious. Does that not say something about your character, though? <laughs> that when your back was to the ropes and you were in fights that you were behind in, yeah. you found a way to win. That was always something that Johnny Nelson always said, find a way to win. Yeah. Um, that's a great skill to have. 
Absolutely. You can you can build everything around that. If you Absolutely. if that fire within that you you won't be denied, you can build around that. Surely. Absolutely, and it's it's a thing where a lot of people had me not winning. Had the, the odds were against me, but I think that's probably one of my greatest attributes. And I thought that was normal. I thought that was consistent in boxing and in fighters. Like if they're behind, they're gonna push through. Like I don't understand how a fighter could kind of give up mid round and say, you know what, and and just kind of just be defeated in, in a mind and not really go for it. Like I'm the complete opposite. I have nothing to lose and I will always give it everything I've got and make sure that I, I, I give my opponent hell. So if you are beating me, you have to do something else different because to be honest, I'm not gonna stop unless I'm sleeping on the canvas and that's the only, that's the only way to beat me, honestly. And you have that equaliser. Yeah. You always have that in your arsenal, the, um, the one hit a quitter. Uh, that can get you out of jail, but it also it just means that you can't miss. Like you, from a ringside point of view, you're on the edge of your seat every yeah. second of every round because you know it could be coming, and it has come, and it has got you out of jail. But is that one of the things you sat down with Angel, or he sat down with you, and he's expressed like you don't have to rely on that yeah. because you've always you've always got it. Yeah. Um, I don't know what what what. I don't want you to give too much away, but yeah. at the same time, what do you think you and Angel are building here? Is it is it the box puncher? Is it someone that is a bit more slick? Because he has got a very sort of, um, I, I hope I'm not talking out of term, but that was one of the reasons AJ brought Angel in was yeah. because he's very fluid, um, very good on lateral movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a combination of everything, to be honest. Um, the good thing is we can check that box. We've got the punch power. We can knock out any fighter in the world if we land, if we land in the right place at the right time. So. It's all about fine tuning all these little things, being able to box laterally, being able to box on the back foot, being able to box forward, and being able to just use creativity because it's, it's boring, it's, it's an art. And we want to show that art form by the same time, but we want to give the fans entertainment. So it's just a mixture, mixture of everything. We don't have one set plan like, okay, we're going to you know, box this type of style, but we're going to learn everything that we can in boxing so we can give a mixture because Let's be real, like in the ring, things don't go how you plan sometimes and you just have to adapt to the situation or you might find an open, opening where you have to change your style slightly and that's what makes the best fighters and we just, we just want to kind of make sure that we have all of those elements covered, those, those, those boxes ticked. So that's what we've been pretty much working on. Just to put a couple of names directly to you, if you do want to win a world title, that will mean um, that you could face someone like Lawrence Akoli. Yeah. Uh, we are expecting him to go up to heavyweight eventually. That mm -hmm. could happen by the time you get there. Could happen with Maris Bradis. Mm -hmm. All the arrows are pointing towards the fact he will step up at heavyweight as well. Yeah. Do you think that you will cross paths with those guys or the timelines might not align? Yeah, I think, I think there's a good chance that it can cross, cross over, especially with this and the hype of this. People are going to start looking and saying, you know what, maybe we can, we can start pushing towards that. We can, we can start building towards that fight and we'll see how quickly I get moved on, on this platform and I believe it will, it will be moved quite quickly. Within 12 to 18 months, like, I could be unified world champion. You know what I mean? So, always positive thinking and we're doing our work behind the scenes. So when the opportunity arises, we're taking it with both hands and nobody, nobody is safe. And you have to believe in yourself at the same time, but do you believe you're good enough to be a world champion? Presumably, you wouldn't be doing this if you didn't think you could, because yeah, you've already yeah. achieved so much in such a short amount of time. Of course, you know, like 11 fights to, to have won the British title, to have won the WBA Intercontinental, undefeated, you know, beat four guys in the top 10. It's crazy. It's, it's, when you look at the CV, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, but we don't, we don't think about the CV. I've buried that and now I'm focusing on the future because that's the thing about this boxing game. I never watch people's CVs and what, what, they've, um, what they've accomplished because it's a, it's a lifestyle and you have to live that life consistently. Once you stop living that life, it doesn't matter what you've achieved so far, you're going to get hurt in the ring against somebody like me that's hungry and doesn't give up and has a strong will. So that's just the game. So it's a, it's a lifestyle, we live it. Slight change of tact, um, but I think there, w there will be people watching this and listening to this that won't have any idea about your backstory. Um, I didn't the first time I, I met you. Um, do you mind talking about where you've come from? Is that no, something no, that you, no, you put in a place? The, the reason I say that is because the, 
if you were to read that on paper, the guy that you were and the guy that you've become, people wouldn't believe that they're the same thing. And I know that um, you spoke about life-changing incidents and life-changing moments that have built you into the guy that you are now. So at the, I suppose without them, you wouldn't be the person that you are now. Absolutely. You know, I've, I've been through a lot of adversities in my life and to be here talking with you is unbelievable. I have people that I knew from back then when I was living a certain type of lifestyle, they're in prison, they're watching me like, I can't believe I used to hang around with this guy. You know, I used to be, you know, we used to be coldies, we used to go everywhere together. And it's like, I've become a completely reformed individual and giving back to my community because that's what keeps me going. That's what gives me energy to, to keep on achieving and to kind of be a type of figurehead. Like if Richard can do it, then like literally, why can't I? I started boxing so late. I started boxing. I had my first fight at 19. A lot of people can't even believe that, like yeah. 19. Because it's shocking. It's yeah. like it, it is usually people that get to the level that you're at, they started at eight, nine, eight, nine maybe, exactly. maybe, maybe earlier than that. Absolutely. All the guys that are boxed, like Tom McCarthy, Sam Hyde, all of them were boxing since they were kids. And I came in so late and just kept on, kept on keeping it consistent, staying in the gym and trying to learn my craft as much as I can. And look what I've achieved, you know, in such a, in, in a period of time. You know, we've had um, Adidas get on board now and they believe in, in me, they, they back me entirely. It's, it's amazing, you know, we want to do some good things. It's not just in boxing, but we want to bring back to the community and give back in different ways. Because I, I feel like if I had a lot more like role models around my area, people achieving things that like I can um, resonate with where they came from the, the street life and stuff, street culture. I would have been like, okay, like, yeah, maybe, maybe I can do that. Maybe I should go to the gym. Maybe I should go to, the, um, to play football and go training instead of chilling on the block with, um, with low lives. And yeah, and after that, everything, everything, like that would have changed me. That could have changed me sooner. Who, who knows where I would have been today? So now I kind of take it on myself. Like, let me just do my best. Even if I can speak to an audience, 100 people and I touch one person that's um, mission accomplished for me honestly yeah because well, I, I was see gonna myself follow that up because person. if, if pit boxing has its detractors for obvious reasons but if boxing if, if boxing saved you mm -hmm. and one person watches this interview one person that s changes their ways and saves their life or saves someone else's life mm -hmm. then you've been a success and I'm sure that you are I'm sure there are people that watch what you do and learn from it and you are a role model yeah of course no listen listen look at my story you know i okay if if i wasn't going to the gym and if i didn't find boxing i wouldn't have found discipline i wouldn't have um had purpose in my life to kind of pursue something um it kept me off the streets i was in the gym when my friends were hanging around on the block i had championships coming up so i couldn't leave the gym and go and chill on the block with, with my friends. I had to rest, recover and get my mind in, in, in um, get my mind right for my, my contest on the weekend. So I literally didn't have the time. And a lot of the trouble that we got ourselves into in the past was because of, of boredom. So it's like a thing where boxing kind of gave me that pathway to stay focused, understand life in a different way, be calm, um, have respect for people. Don't underestimate people. Always be a peacemaker. I've never had a, like a fight on the streets since I started boxing. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, but, but people associate boxers with boxers street violence. Are, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But you would be surprised. Most of the fighters are the most humblest people and down-to-earth people that you will ever meet. They are the peacemakers. They're the people that would would try would shy away from trouble, like honestly. Yeah. And it's 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 funny. I think they got this perception of of us fighters like we're just so aggressive and stuff, I'm like a completely different yeah, person in the, the ring. It's the opposite, that's the truth, <laughs> literally, it's the I'm literally the opposite. The opposite. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, I think it's exciting though at the same time because, you know, you meet somebody that's supposed to be this kind of bad guy, you know, uh, and, and, and machine in the ring and you come out and you see somebody that's just full of life. That's why, <laughs> that's why I find it very easy to be around you. But on fight week, I find I'm very wary of you at the same time because, you know, behind yeah. the smile and the, and, the, and the appearance is, is, a, is a real puncher, a real fighter. Yeah, of course, and, of course. You know. don't, get, don't get it twisted. You know, when I get in that ring, I am about the smoke. I, I am very serious about, about achieving my goals. And anybody that's obstructing me is, is an enemy. It's just that simple. 
and for how hard I've worked and to get to where I am now, there's nobody, nobody's going to take that from me. I tell you that, like nobody's going to take that from me. So I'll do whatever I need to do to win. That's knocking you out in the first second. I'll, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm laughing. What a great way to end it. It's like a chilling message, but you've got this great smile at the end of it. But you just laugh. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to have you on board. Yeah. Can't wait for the journey. I'm and glad uh, to be here. Yeah, Richard Riappour 2.0. We yeah. just can't yeah. wait. Yeah, don't throw too many punches, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs>